So our young patient was in a need of cytoreductive therapy. Now hydroxyurea was introduced and patient is coming for the follow-up after a few months, still having uncontrolled symptoms, uncontrolled red blood cell count, uncontrolled white cells, white cells is increasing, and has the symptoms, abdominal symptoms from enlarged spleen. This is totally uncontrolled case of polycythemia vera. But to step back for a second, what is the goal of therapy? Once you introduce cytoreductive therapy, we talk about five different factors. First is to control the red blood cell count, hematocrit below 45%. Everybody hopefully knows about it. The second is to control the white cells. If the white cells are increased, they should be normalized. If the platelets are increased, they should be normalized. If the spleen is increased, they should be normalized. And the symptoms should be controlled. So we usually now talk about controlling polycythemia vera by looking at five factors. Not only red blood cell count, like in the past, by five factors that are listed. So in this particular case, in our case, we have no control of the symptoms, no control of spleen, white cells is high, and red blood cell count is high. And this is despite hydroxyurea. Plus, the patient has side effects from hydroxyurea. The leg ulcers are the most common side effects from hydroxyurea. Side effects from hydroxyurea are not very common. Perhaps up to 10% of the patients may, can, may have some side effects. Nine out of 10 cases when we talk about side effects is a leg ulcer, usually on a lower leg, and it's not gonna heal unless the hydroxyurea is stopped. So this is a good reason to stop hydroxyurea. Even with a good control of the blood cell count, if you have a side effects that's not satisfactory, you wanna have a safe drug doing the job. There has been a number of studies in a retrospective way where patients with polycythemia vera were analyzed, whether there is a contribution of elevated white blood cell count to a risk of thrombosis. And by and large, we all agree that that's the case. Now, general guidelines, as of yet, do not in include increase in white cell count as a one of full-fledged thrombotic risk factor. It is still only age over 60 and history of thrombosis. In our everyday practice, however, we are sensitive to increase in white blood cell count because of this number of papers. What would make a white blood cell count accounted for in everyday national guidelines practice? that would require a prospective randomized study with the goal of controlling white, white blood cell count. That is difficult to do. But there is enough circumstantial evidence from the history to be sensitive to that number. And elevation of the blood, blood cell count, therefore, would guide one to either to modify the dose to control it, or even in some cases, to change the therapy if the white blood cell count is not controlled well.